Okay, we're going to read um, An American Legend. I am going to underline this. This is a title. And let's get start, started. Um, number one. The life of a pioneer was not easy. From sunrise to sunset in all seasons, cooking fires had to be tended. Livestock had to be watered and fed. Fields had to be plowed and crops had to be planted. Despite the physical demands of this task, men, women, and children too labored to meet their daily needs. Okay, I'm going to stop a little bit and I'm going to underline the important thing here. They're talking about physical demands of these tasks and everybody had to work very hard. One of the ways we know about this period and especially about the lives of pioneer women is through the photographs. Okay, this is what we're talking about. Photographs of Evelyn Cameron. Today, her photographs are probably more famous than her name. So this is informational. They're talking about this um, photographer and I can infer that she's a legend now. And she, her expertise is the pioneer uh, way of life, way of life. So we know about the way of life back then because of her. I'm making an inference. Number two, Cameron's story begins in London, England, when she, where she was born in 18... 68. Her father owned a large state, and Cameron was surrounded by many comforts while growing up. Okay, I'm going to underline that. Um, London, England, that year, and many comforts. I mean, it means that she had everything she needed. Okay? She was never required to do chores, so she didn't do anything. All right? And she experienced the many privileges that came from her family's wealth. So she came from a rich family. But this wasn't the lifestyle Cameron desired. She wanted adventure. She didn't want to live like that. All right? Living a life in luxury. Living. Okay, guys. We have a subtitle. And the subtitle indicates me what... I am about to read. So by the subtitle, I can infer that they're going to tell me how she moved on from being under her parents, um, I don't know, a house or living in their house and with all these um, the advantages of uh, being wealthy that she didn't have to do anything. And she didn't want to do to live like that anymore. She wanted that adventure. So they're going to explain to us how she did it. So now that I have thought about it, I can read. Number three. In 1889, Cameron married a man who, was, who also liked adventure. There you go. This is how. Okay. For their honeymoon, they took a trip to Montana. At the time, Montana was a wild, untamed place. Wild, untamed place. Nothing like an English estate with, it, with its neat lawns. In Montana, the open and desolate grasslands rolled on for miles. So there's nothing, 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 nothing. Okay? Weather was extreme, marked by periodic droughts, no rain, severe winters, super cold, scorching summers, super hot. But Cameron and her husband fell in love with the open sky. This is important. I'm going to use the blue color. Cameron and her husband fell in love with the open sky, the colorful sunsets, and the star-filled nights. So they love nature. They didn't want um, anything else. They loved it there. Number four. Living in Montana proved to be satisfying for Cameron and her husband. They live in a ranch house. There you go. And often spend their free time hunting. That's adventures, exploring, and watching birds with binoculars. Each day provided a new encounter with nature. To them, the prairie was the perfect, I'm sorry, was perfect for their rustic lifestyle. That's what they wanted. Simple life. 
Cameron, number five, Cameron's husband st started his own business breeding polo ponies that he planned to ship to England for sale. Unfortunately, his business failed. Oh, and he suffered health program problems. Okay. Oh, here you go. Cameron was determined to stay in Montana, though. So he she looked for ways to provide for herself and her husband. So she had to work to provide. All right. Okay, number f six, making a living. So how did she provide? What did she do? Cameron grew vegetables to sell. This is how she do it, which raised some money. She also rented rooms in her house that also made her some money uh, to boarders, although these didn't bring in much money either. However, this adventure did bring something else, which changed Cameron's life. One of her boarders introduced Cameron to the art of photography. Oh, here we go. It soon became her passion. Number seven. In 1994, Cameron bought a camera. Mm -hmm. Although it was large and somewhat complicated to use, Cameron soon mastered the art of taking pictures. She started a business in which she traveled around and took people's portraits. Oh. She's doing something she loves. This brought her in contact with cowboys, ranchers, sheep, shirts, and pioneer women. Her pictures capture people hard at work. This is why her pictures are so special. Cowboys, cowboys standing to their horses, ranchers threshing wheat, and women cooking, mending fences, and roping cattle. And I have a photo. Self-portrait of Evelyn Cameron. And I can see right here, this is a camera she used. Number eight, by the early 1900s, work was steady, but the health problems of Cameron's husband had worsened tone. So Cameron performed many of the ranch works herself, so she was doing that, and she was also working in the ranch. Her one soft skin now shows signs of her long hours working in the sun. She wrote to her niece, manual labor is about all I care about. I'm sorry, it's about all I care about. And after all, is what will really make a strong woman. That's what she thought. And well, in the other page, we can see a photo. It's a scammer making a cow. There you go. And this is just to reinforce the idea that she wasn't scared of manual, ma manual labor. Okay? And then we have another subtitle, Discovering a Historical Treasure. So this is like the way that she became famous, I guess. Number nine. Cameron continued taking photographs until her day and death in 1928. All her pictures were stored in her basement. Oh. So she didn't get to share those when she was alive. It wasn't until 1978 that Cameron's photos were discovered, were discovered by a writer researching the lives of pioneer women. While looking for information to include in her book, she unearthed it. This is a word that I know they will uh, ask me. So I'm going to underline this. Around 2,500 photographs, various photography items, and 35 leather-bound hours belonging to Cameron. So this is a writer that was looking for information on how um, people lived back then, and she discovered this. And it may, well, it should have been a treasure for her because she was doing research. Unearth it. This word, if I take this part over here and this part over here, I get the root word, which is earth. Mm, unearthed will be like unburied. Mm, there you go. Number 10, Cameron's photograph tells stories about pioneer life. This is why she became famous. It was a life she loved and documented well. Cameron's photographs have been collected in books and can be viewed on the internet. Oh, I'm going to search for those. They can also be seen in museums located throughout Montana and in the National Cowgirl Museum and Hall of Fame in Fort Worth, Texas. E Texas! Cameron's photographs 
will forever remain a part of American history, making her a true American legend. Hence the title. And we have another photograph. It's a Cameron's photograph of a female hamster plowing a field. Here we go. This is why these photos are so important. Okay, let's move to the questions. Okay, it says, having access to the comforts of wealth during the, her childhood made Cameron realize that she, I remember those, that part, she didn't want to live like that. She wanted that adventure, remember? Okay, now that I have thought about it, I can bring my choices. Remember, two of them are always wrong, like, oh, this is crazy wrong. And one is the distractor, and the other one is the correct answer, and they look pretty much the same, but there's a slight difference between them. Letter F. Uh, waited to move away from her family? No, not exactly. She didn't want to move away. Was not interested in a life of luxury? Luxury. This means... Hmm. She was not interested. I'm going to put a little line in over there, a little dot. Wanted to be a photographer? She didn't know that she wanted to be a pho photographer. No. How to decide to work with animals? She didn't know that either. She went to the adventure and she did not want to leave to have all the comforts in the world. Okay, so my correct answer has to be this one. She was not interested in a life of luxury. She wanted adventure. There you go. Number 41. Which words in paragraph 9 help a reader understand what on earth it means? On earth. And I know earth, so I know earth. This prefix means no, and this is the past tense. This is the suffix, the past tense. All right. So on Earth, it. I remember they were talking. They were talking about the photographs that they were that were uh, discovered in the basement because in the basement, yeah, everything was kept in there until this writer researcher found them, and then he or she on earthed them. You need to go back to your passage, guys. So I let me go back to my choices. A, were discovered. This sounds like a head. Let me go back to the other ones. Uh, diaries belonging to? Uh, no. This has nothing to do with that. Information to include in has nothing to do with earth. Researching the lives? No. When I discover they were discovered, they were um, unburied. So, this is my correct answer. Okay. Um, number 42. Cameron's actions in paragraphs 5 and 6 support the message that I need to stop because I don't have photographic memory. I need to go back to paragraphs 5 and 6. So this is what I have, paragraphs, <coughs> sorry, five and six, it says make a living. Hmm. So they're talking about her, oh, the way that she made money, remember? I'm going to use the black color now. So this is how she made money. She grew vegetables, she rented rooms, and then there was a guest that introduced her to the art of photography. And then she bought a camera and she started a business taking people's portraits. There you go. Okay, I can go now to my question. Okay, the question says, camera's actions. What did she do? Well, she rented rooms in her house and she grew some vegetables, and then she got a camera, and then she was hired to f actually take people's portraits. So I'm going to check my quest my answers here. Traveling to new areas in the best way to avoid boredom? Totally wrong. Had nothing to do with that. They're not talking about her being bored. Spare time should be spent planning for the future. She didn't have any spare time. Spare time, no, she had a lot of work. Um, no. Things that are highly valued are worth working for. Hmm, this could be. Letter J, it is wise to observe the ways that nat nature affects people. Observe the ways that nature affects people? I don't think so. 
this is what I think is the correct answer. She worked very hard to provide for her family because her husband was sick. And she actually worked very hard for it. Okay, there you go. Okay, guys, it says, what is the best summary? I know that the, this question always appears. So they're asking for the best summary for the section making a living. And as you can see, I need to go back and check the section. They're not talking about the whole passage. It's just a section. So I need to go back and check what I underlined. That's why we are underlining. It says, well, the first part over here uh, talks about what she did and then how she started with photography. So I'm, let me go back to my choices and see if they can talk about that. After making money, uh, after making money selling vegetables and renting out rooms, this is the, the beginning, right? Emily Cameron started a photographic business. There you go. She took portraits of many different people. Okay, number letter A could be. I'm going to go to letter B. Evelyn Cameron enjoyed the hard work of farming and ranching. Um... <sighs> It doesn't talk about the first part of that section. So I don't think letter B is correct. So you know what? This one doesn't have the beginning. I There's nothing I can underline with red. So I'm going to cross this out. No. All right. Letter C. Evelyn Cameron sold vegetables. Yes. Rented out rooms. Yes. But this part... Okay, I don't think we ne we necessarily have to include this part over here. I get I guess it's a detail. It's not important. I mean, it's not relevant information. In 1894, Cameron bought a camera to start taking photographs. This is part of the beginning. She practiced photography until she became skillful. I have no idea where they why they put that there. Does it say that in here? It doesn't say, it doesn't mention anything about her practicing. Hmm. Letter C is not okay. Letter B is not okay. Let me find letter B. Since Evelyn Cameron was not successful as a farmer, she decided to start a photography business. It didn't happen that way. Uh, in 1894, she purchased a camera and spent time developing her skills as a photographer. Then she then managed to find regular work. Hmm. Regular work taking pictures of cowboys and pioneer women. Do we have this information there? Can we say that she wasn't successful? Because it didn't she didn't get enough money from that okay I don't think letter D is correct either uh, I'm going to make this a small and this part too so you can see the other part my god let me move this <laughs> this part over here by the early 1800s no, I'm sorry by the early 1900s work was steady but the health problems of Cameron husband had worse and so Cameron performed many of the ranchers herself so this section making a living is talking about how she became successful right but in the camera business where is it oh wait this one goes here Right? So the correct answer, I'm sorry that I'm moving this too much. The correct answer has to be letter A. So let me circle it with black and blue. All right. What does the first photograph in this selection show? I can't remember. Let me go back. Okay, guys, found it. This is a photograph. What does it show? 
what does it show? It shows her with her photograph, uh, her camera. Okay, so it says how much time it took Cameron to learn to use her camera. Can I show how much time? I can't. G, the places Cameron travel. The places, you can barely see the place. No. How much support Cameron received from neighbors? Guys, this is a distractor. You may think this is correct because you have people there, but you don't know where she is. You don't even know if those people are her neighbors. So I think that's a distractor. The type of equipment, you know, equipment, the camera, camera work with to take portraits. Do we, can we see the camera? Yes, so this is a correct answer. Okay, last two questions we have. Uh, read this sentence from the selection. Manual labor is about all I care about. Uh, is, this means like there's nothing more important, okay? And after all, is what will really make a strong woman, okay? It's important for her. The author included this quotation. Quotation is the actual words of the person. So she actually said those words. To show the reader the camera, to show me why. What does he want me to know? That she actually thought that manual labor was very important. Mm -hmm. So letter A. Thought she thought ranch work was more interesting than photography? No. Focused on changing the way work was done in ranching communities? No, she's not saying it should be changed. Not changed, not more interesting, it's just important. The letter C, value. Hey, this is a word. Value means important. Value being independent and hardworking more than having a comfortable life. This value means, value means important. And it says here, uh, care about, you care about things that are important. Letter D, was unaware of the physical effort, unaware, she didn't know, didn't, I don't think she didn't know. She didn't know the physical effort? Nah, -ha. so what is the correct answer? Letter C, she value, value means importance. And the last one, the author says that Cameron and her husband fell in love with the open sky. Oh, I remember this part. They, they love nature, okay? To emphasize Cameron's um, belief that, what did she believe? She believed in nature. Now I can read my choices. She believed in nature and the open sky. A beautiful environment was a desirable quality for home. Beautiful environment, yes, this could be. The best photographs could be taken at night. They're not talking about photogra photography. Montana had more hours of daylight. No. The weather was better. They were not compar comparing the weather. They were talking about the sky and the sunset and the nights. So this is it. A beautiful environment was a desirable quality for a home. Regardless if the house was big or small, what surrounded the house was important.